Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Hope you are all doing well. As you can see, I uh, brought a guest with me today. Uh, the President's decision on Jerusalem has been briefed to you all by the White House, the NSC, and also the State Department. So we won't repeat that today, but we've brought our Acting Assistant Secretary for Near East Affairs, David Satterfield, who has served here at the State Department for just about 40 years, uh, first as a civil servant and then as a Foreign Service Officer. And so he's going to start out taking some of your questions. Uh, I know all of you, he does not, so I'll help facilitate and call on people. And then after uh, he's done with the Q&A, I will gladly take your questions on any other issues. So uh, Acting Assistant Secretary David Satterfield, thank you so much, sir. Thanks, sir. Take your questions. Sure. Yes, I uh, yeah. Oh, I'm um, sorry. Um, so I've got, I, I've got um, what are going to sound like a couple softballs, but uh, but they were questions that your predecessors and others' predecessors uh, weren't able to answer very easily. So just bear with me, the two very brief ones. What is the capital of Israel? Uh, the President announced yesterday, issued a proclamation declaring the United States recognizes Jerusalem as the capital of the State of Israel. So the answer to the question is Jerusalem, That's correct? That's exactly right. What country is Jerusalem in? Uh, the President recognized Jerusalem as the capital of the State of Israel. Does that mean, then, that the U.S. government officially recognizes that Jerusalem, the municipality, lies within the State of Israel? There has been no change in our policy uh, with respect to consular practice or passport issuance at this time, which is where I think you are. Well, that's what, I wanted to know what the practical implications of this decision are, not in terms of necessarily broad policy, the peace process, whatever, mm -hmm. but things like maps, will they be withdrawn? Will the passport issue, uh, will passports now identify Jerusalem as being within Israel uh, if that per the person was born there? What about official documents? Will they say Jerusalem, comma, Israel? What about the mailing address of the consulate or I've the street address of the consulate? I've already commented that on consular practice there is no change uh, at this time. With respect to maps, uh, we are, of course, examining that issue. And when we have a decision, uh, we will announce it with respect to how we will treat uh, Jerusalem for official USG-produced mapping purposes. Okay. So that sounds to me like w with these areas there is no ch practical impact. On consular practice, right. there is no impact. Thank you. So I'm, 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 from I'm, Jerusalem. Me, I'm being from I'll, Jerusalem. Excuse me, sorry, I'll just call on the questions, okay? Since he doesn't know me. Uh, yeah. Hi. Secretary. Um, could, it, could I just put a, a finer point on it? The President said, and you just said, that um, Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. But he also said that the borders um, are yet you know, that, that there's no change boundaries in the boundaries of sovereignty. The boundaries Border of sovereignty. So, have not what been he's so you're essentially saying that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel, but you're not saying that the entire municipality of Jerusalem falls I, into that capital. I will restate what the president said, which is we recognize Jerusalem as the capital of the state of Israel. Uh, we are not changing or taking a position on the boundaries of sovereignty in Jerusalem, including that... geographic boundaries, and I will not elaborate beyond that well, except to note a further comment which the President made, which is that we regard those issues, the specifics, the boundaries of sovereignty, borders, as a matter for permanent status or final status negotiations between the party, and I think that addresses just about everything uh, that could fall I, in the basket you're raising. If I might. If I might, I think that's you know very parsed language, and you know kind of a very legal, uh, you know kind of diplomatese um, well, definition. And if you could kind <laughs> of you. put it into a li <laughs> which you're very good at, by the way, after many years, if you could put it into layman's terms, what is what does that mean? That you know you call Jerusalem the capital of Israel, but then you say that the boundaries yeah. of sovereignty, I think that, you know, people would like a, a little bit more of a layman's definition. I think the way the President presented it yesterday in his remarks and in the proclamation does a pretty good job of that, which is to say we're acknowledging reality, something practical. Jerusalem is currently, historically, capital of Israel. That's the decision he announced. With respect to boundaries of sovereignty, borders, geography, those are matters for final status negotiations between the party, and we're not going to touch on those 
at this time. And I think that speaks for itself. And I'll use his words rather than my own diplomatese. Yes, hi. My, my, my name is Hayek. Uh, I just want to follow up uh, on East Jerusalem because it's really, it's, it's mm -hmm. not clear at all, not in my mind. So what happens to the Palestinian population of East Jerusalem? Do they now become automatically Israeli citizens, would have full rights and so on? What happened to 300,000 Palestinians? So the president's proclamation yesterday, his decision have no impact on those issues. He is recognizing a practical reality. Jerusalem is the capital of Israel and all of the other aspects, boundaries of sovereignty. We're not taking up positions so, for the so, sides to resolve. So if you just bear with me for a second. So why not say West Jerusalem? I mean, the Russians have done that. It did not cause any problem and so on. Well, why don't you say that, you know, this part is Jerusalem, has been negotiated, as you yourself have been involved for so many years, this portion is designated to become the capital of the Palestinian state. Side, the president's decision speaks for itself. There are many words that are in his statement, in his remarks. There are words that aren't. We recognize Jerusalem as the capital of the state of Israel. He didn't go beyond that, and I'm not going to go beyond. Can you that. can you share with us just one 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 last thing? Could you share with us uh, one one national security interest of the United States that this recognition has served? Can you identify one national security interest of the United States that this recognition President has identified? President is committed to advancing a peace process between Israel and the Palestinians. In his view upon reflection, this step, he believes, assists in that process. Full stop. Can you explain that? Can, I, can I just ask, ask exactly uh, we're trying to Mr. Go right ahead. I'm uh, hold on can, just to Matt's point, can you explain why a decision, decision making process needs to be made about maps and things like that and, and consular services? I mean, you said yourself the president declared Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. Why, why does there need to be a further decision-making process on those other issues? It's a very simple answer, and it's wholly technical. What phrasing do you place upon government-issued maps? There are different word choices that can be used to be clear. There will be a decision made. When the decision is made, you'll have it, and you'll have the maps. And can you just explain why now? Why did he make this decision now? Because December 4th was the trigger date for the next waiver required under the Jerusalem Act of 95. That was the proximate timing issue. So there Full was no strategic. Dis the, it was to totally. The president had to make a decision. He did. Well, why didn't but he do it on the fourth? That's the legal requirement of the no, act. Every he, six months, a waiver has to be issued. He didn't do it on the fourth. He did it on the sixth. We believe, and I believe the White House has spoken to this. Technically, we were in compliance. We'll leave it to the Hill on whether 48 hours constituted a problem or not. But the fourth was the trigger date. Wow, I wish my editors had your sense of deadline. <laughs> Thanks. Um, can you just say how, how this furthers the peace process? The President believes taking this issue, that is the fact of U.S. recognition, acknowledgement of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, an issue that's been pending out there since 95, uh, uh, since the act was initially passed, uh, was appropriate to make, and that it helps in the process to no longer have that issue, which is the U.S. acknowledgement of the simple fact that Jerusalem is the location of the Supreme Court, the Knesset, the President and the Prime Minister's residences, that that is a useful clearing of an issue that has been part of, grown as part of this process for many decades. So it's setting us up for what? To, to uh, If you're saying that that gets that out of the way and it's been a reality, um, how does that set the stage? The President and his peace team have been engaged, as you all know, for many months now in discussions with two parties, with regional states, with other key actors to try to advance a peace. This is not an easy process. It's a difficult one. But he believes this step assists in that process. I am not going to elaborate on that further. And how would um, The Palestinians said that the U.S. cannot anymore be a mediator in this um, peace process. So how do you think this presidential team can go forward and broker a deal with if one of the two main actors doesn't want him it as a mediator? It will not surprise you to hear, after all these years, my response is we will judge parties by their actions rather than by statements. Thanks. Um, as a veteran diplomat and um, representative of NEA, do you personally agree with the President's decision? 
on that. I'm an employee of the U.S. government. I'm a Foreign Service officer. Um, we all, and I speak of my boss, the Secretary, and the other principals of the U.S. government, we are all part of this team. This is a decision uh, which we will work our best to execute in advance. How long did NEA consult with the administration? I'm this? not going to get into a TikTok on this. Do you believe that this decision in any way impairs the pursuit of peace by the United States? We've made clear, the President has made clear, that he hopes it helps advance this process, helps move it forward. That, that's not my question. Clears my initiative. question is, do you think it in any way impairs the pursuit of peace? I know what you hope. I want to know if you think it has impaired your efforts. Uh, I can't make that judgment at this point. Not even given the negative reactions that you have seen in Arab capitals among some of your allies, let alone the Palestinians? No. Again, we will judge by what actually happens with those parties as we deal with this process, as we carry on discussions with them. Again, we're not going to be driven by statements. And one other question. Do you regard those portions of East Jerusalem that were occupied by Israel in 1967 uh, as occupied territory. The decision of the president is to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of the state of Israel. The president has stated that that decision does not touch upon issues of boundaries of sovereignty or geographic uh, borders. Full stop. So it is still occupied territory in your view? I have stated what the President's decision does and does not do. Kyla can say yes. Um, what is the current policy of the U.S. administration towards Israeli settlements in East Jerusalem? Uh, as this decision uh, had no impact on any issue other than the recognition or acknowledgement of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. No, but so I've you, answered your question. Could you follow up what the policy therefore is, even though it has not been? I'm impacted? not going to restate the policy at this well, point. Can I, can I just ask you Are you accepting the premise of the question that construction in East Jerusalem is is settlement activity? What I, I don't am, believe that. The what I am is stating settlement. is an affirmative. The president's decision was a recognition of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. The okay. president made clear. Issues that touch upon the, the boundaries of sovereignty, final status issues, are not addressed by his decision. I, I get it. The question is of one of terminology. Fine. You call construction in the West Bank settlement activity, but not necessarily construction in East Jerusalem. That's just construction. It hasn't traditionally The president's been. decision did not touch on those issues. Uh, <clears throat> explain the distinction between recognizing the capital and it not um, and not uh, deciding anything on borders as it refers to a deal because if you're saying that this is a final status issue to be negotiated at the table how does either a this not prejudice a deal when Jerusalem is a final status issue or B how is it not a meaningless declaration that could be negotiated at the table. It, it has to be one or the other. Well, these final status negotiations are going to deal with those boundaries of sovereignty, border questions, that the President spoke so to as not addressed by his recognition. The President thought it was the right thing to do for the United States after all these years to acknowledge the fact of the reality that Jerusalem is the seat of government of the State of Israel, the capital of the State of Israel. That's it. But it's in, respectfully, it's inconsistent with the idea that you would also be negotiating at the table unless you can acknowledge what we're all trying to get you to say, which you, Thank you are Liz. fully you may or well not. think that. Thank well, you. Of, but but the idea that it may that is that Jerusalem is the capital, but perhaps in final status negotiations that it might be not the divide, the united capital. At least I I will only address one more point on this. What were the words the president used? It was a very simple statement, recognition of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. There are words you might want to put in there, he didn't. There are words you might want to take out, he didn't. That statement was very carefully made, as was the comment, 
we are not prejudicing addressing by this decision final status issues. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Acting Assistant Secretary David Satterfield, appreciate it. Thank and you. your expertise, sir. Thank Thanks. you.